The Still Loading Podcast is brought to you by the wonderful people over on Patreon. Amazing people like Stephen P., Gilmer, Mr. Biscuits, Kevin from the Bit by Bit Foundation, Charles M., and Eric H. have been wonderful enough to support the show over there. So if you would also like to get your name read at the beginning of each episode, along with some other bonus goodies, go over to patreon.com slash stillloadingpod and check out all there is to offer. On this episode of Still Loading, will you race against me? And welcome to this new episode of the Still Loading Podcast. I'm your host, Josh Koval, and today on the show, it is the finale of Mario Mania of Mario Month for 2024. This was an extra long one this year, all in celebration of episode 300, all the way back in February. Shout out to the Super Mario Fantasy Draft. Thank you once again to all my guests on episode 300. But joining me today to help round out this portion of Mario Mania, the final episode of Mario Mania this year, are two of my good podcasting friends. I've known them for years. We have collaborated a number of times. Their podcast has been on hiatus, unfortunately, for quite some time, but that doesn't mean they aren't great podcasters. So joining me today are my good friends, the giant dragons of podcasting brian and joe from the taste of dragons podcast guys how are you doing today <laughs> doing pretty good doing pretty good uh i've I never like considered myself a giant this is exciting <laughs> <laughs> well dragons yeah. are big right they are. they are they are it's true it's true uh yeah we've, we've been on uh hiatus for uh yeah about probably about a year now uh life got in the way for pretty much out of all of us because there's uh five of us on the podcast and literally <laughs> so life intense. hit all of us at the exact same time like just hard <laughs> so like even our last podcast we're like all right we're back in it and then no we weren't <laughs> <'cause>... ghosted <laughs> Nope. <laughs> but you know, that's how things go sometimes, right? So we had four nice long years where we uh, recorded weekly, put about weekly, and then yep. never missed an episode. Never missed an I episode. Real good about that. And then and then we missed all of them. So <laughs> <laughs> then we made up for it really we hard. We did. <laughs> well, real talk, it's impressive that you guys went that long with five host five co-hosts that is an immense amount of work to schedule and coordinate on at all let alone a weekly yeah. basis now it is it is beneficial that y'all live pretty close to each other i know though i do know uh what is it has cells up kind of my way actually up here in the northeast correct uh, right yeah. but uh yes, yes. Yeah. So, but most of you, the four, four out of the five of you are all down in Florida. So it makes it a little bit easier, but even so, like, I can't even, I can barely find time to visit my friend, Justin, who, you know, he's been on the show a bunch of times, who's like 20 minutes, like 30 minutes away from me, <laughs> let alone <laughs> yeah. uh, finding time to podcast with him. But yeah, uh, thank you both for setting aside your evening tonight or not, maybe, not the whole evening. I'm not going to be taking five hours of your night, but thank you for setting aside some time for this. Uh, thank you for joining me. So to kick this off, we are talking about Mario Kart Wii. It is the only Wii game, or excuse me, the only Mario Kart game on the Wii, but I guess it's kind of par for the course with most Mario Karts. You don't you, you don't normally double up on, on consoles. Um, it's true. But we were talking about Mario Kart Wii, and I forget, I, I was, you guys were streaming, and I mentioned that I was looking for guests for it, and I asked if you'd be interested, interested and you both said yes. For this one, so I gotta ask, like, what about Mario Kart Wii does it for you? Like, what do you like about this game? What are some of your memories with it? Why, why Mario Kart Wii? Because this game is honestly one of the more polarizing, from my understanding. It, it is. <laughs> Yeah, it's um so so this one's kind of interesting because so this one came out before we before we were dating. This came out the year before we were dating. So like when we when we started dating, um you know, this was the most recent Mario Kart. Yep. And so, you know, that 
what what do you do when you you know when you're first starting dating? You're trying to figure out what each other's interests are, how you guys interact, that type of stuff. And you know what better way than like a Mario Kart or a Mario Party to you know just completely drive a wedge in you? Uh, so <laughs> it's like it's like the monopoly <laughs> of video games. It is, isn't it? So uh, so we a second. We apologize. I believe we're having technical difficulties on our side. No, it's all good. All right, it's all good. good. Okay, cool. Okay, it's our, our, our screen server. Uh, I, I had a, a very uh, normal, completely normal uh, friend group where we were all very large video game fans. And you we did completely normal things like, you know, start a theater troupe with based on video game characters and, you know, do live <laughs> shows about that. And we did completely normal things. And one of our favorite things to do after rehearsals was to like play Mario Party or play Mario Kart or and get together, get together and play some game. Uh, we were very into video games. Uh, I don't know if I've made that as clear as I as I could. <laughs> um, very normal. We were very, completely normal. Very I should normal. keep Super hitting normal. that part home. <laughs> so normal. We um, were but, normal. Yeah, we, ha-ha, zing. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, no, it was before <laughs> before uh, we started dating, and uh, we were just friends at that point. And then our, our our my large group of friends, essentially after rehearsals and stuff, we would we would still hang out. And we would, we tend, at this point in time, we were playing Mario Kart, which humorously enough, I never play with anyone. It's true. I play Mario Kart by myself. I do not (laughs) play it with other people. This was probably the first time I played it with people in years. Yeah. I I had too many um, people in my life that were not, not, don't enjoy uh, losing. It's true. It's true. I think what's, what's really funny about this is because, you know, this, you could play with so many players and there's so many different control schemes that you could actually mm-hmm. do this with mm-hmm. that yeah. it was very funny. Uh, like, every, you know, we all have our controller, you know, there's, you know, there's a, a certain amount of controllers. So, you know, we're all passing them to one another. And so like you would get a controller, be like, oh man, I really don't want the Wii control. You know, I don't, I don't want, want the, the wheel. I don't want the wheel. <laughs> oh, I went hard man. on all of the accessories. So then it's just, so then you would like blame it on like, oh, well, this is, I had the, I had the wheel. Of course I was going to do bad. Like it was, like you would make excuses. It was so great. It's, uh, yeah, this, this, this was a lot of fun and it was at a very interesting time, uh, in our lives. Um, and so, yeah, this, this, this definitely, uh, uh, you know, holds some memories with us. <laughs> it's it's mm. probably, it is probably the first one I went back to playing with people with. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I wouldn't play the GameCube one. I wouldn't play with, I wouldn't play with anybody. Um, and it was very, it, I would like to watch. I would, I would watch other people play and then I would just go play it by myself because I didn't like to, I don't like the, uh, I don't like losing and I also don't like winning. I don't want to be taking anyone else's joy from them. <laughs> so I also don't like losing. <laughs> so it was very like, and, and I have a brother and a sister, so I always had to win in those situations. So it was one of those like, you know, you either win or you lost. Didn't matter what what place you were. As long as you didn't get blue shelled, you were fine. True. Mm-hmm. True. Yeah. You know, getting bullet billed was always fun. Yeah, that's true. It's true. That's, that's this, so this one funny. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> that's so funny that like you have this bizarre combination of like, I need to like the, the killer instinct of like, I must win. All must bow before me. But then at the same time, you hate losing so much that your empathy kicks in. You're like, I can't make anyone feel that. That's right? exactly what it That's is. Awful. <laughs> it's so horrible. <laughs> I don't, this is why I play a lot of first, like, like single player games in general, because I just don't want to see anyone. I don't want to make anyone else's not, not happy. I just, it's, it's, I'm a people pleaser. This is what I do. It's true. <laughs> I, I can relate to that. I'm not as much of a people pleaser, but I am a, I'm a bit of a sore loser. I've talked about it on like uh, my land party episode earlier this year where like, I just get, really angry if i think i'm supposed to be good at something and i that and then i'm not and i'm losing (laughs) then i just get really like unjustifiably angry and i don't like that it's a character flaw that i really don't like and i don't i i I technically should work on it but that requires Mm -hmm. me to be putting myself into a situation where i'm purposely making myself angry and trying (laughs) to control the anger it just doesn't seem like a good time all around for for all parties concerned (laughs) <laughs> I, I hear you. Uh, there's an irrational anger that happens when it doesn't work out the way I think it should. And I'm like, what, well, what what could I have done better? What could I have changed? Like, you can't change anything. It just happened. You lost the race. It is what it is, girl. Move on. Yeah, You got blue shelled. There's nothing blue-shelled. else. That's, that's just Sorry. what happens, man. <laughs> well, especially in this game, it feels like they, they really try to 
up the the ante in terms of items because there's so many different items that can change the course of the race it can change uh who's winning who's losing that kind of stuff like even when i was playing this game in preparation for this episode i got blue shelled so many times <laughs> granted i was only playing yeah. on 50 cc but even so it was just like there was so much there's so much shit thrown at you in this game it's everywhere <laughs> it is this game has one of those like those weird interfaces too where the ui is is so colorful and because Mm -hmm. they i think that this is the one they added the the drifting sparks the drifting sparks were in this one Mm -hmm. i don't remember them being in the other ones if they were please correct me but (laughs) i i think because it helped me this is one of the few where when i played with other people i was like all right i don't feel that stupid about not understanding how the drift works or not being able that good at it there was a visual cue now and i was like yeah this is great and the wiimotes pulled really well like i mean i I was not an I was not an early fan of the Wiimotes and the Joy-Con. I, that was just not for me. I you really mean the, the Wiimote, the Joy-Con. The is Wiimote. A oh, you're talking about the, what was the no? What was the what was the, the, the nunchuck? The nunchuck. There yeah. we go. The Wiimote and the nunchuck. Thank you. Sorry, I've I've had Joy Cons for way too long. It, it's been um, almost a decade of Switch. You're fu- oh I, my I get god, it. has it really? Yeah. 2017. We're, 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 we're only three <laughs> years away from a decade yeah. of Switch. You're not wow. wrong, man. Goodness gracious! Time kind of awesome. I mean, Switch Two supposedly is coming. No. You know, by the time we'll this episode comes out, a, a direct may already be have happened. It's true. That You're not wrong. So cool. You're not wrong. But yeah, there were so many different ways you could control it. And, you know, like we mentioned before, like depending on who you're playing with, it's like, oh, man, I got this controller scheme. All right. This is what I got to make do with. And then it wasn't just that, but like also like this was also like depending on which character you chose depended on what you would get as far as your cards or what you could choose for your card mm-hmm. so like that also like if you weren't like if you weren't like hardcore into it you would just be like all right cool let me choose daisy and let me choose this cart and then you know whoa, you, whoa, who whoa. Knew? you had to unlock her at 150 cc you're not right? wrong you had to get i'm just a, saying okay, she was not like a given all right <laughs> sorry sorry i'm just saying like as a new person like if you're just coming into it and like you know all of your friends are already playing it a lot and you're like, oh, let me choose this cart and this character. And it's a terrible combination. Well, <laughs> that is what it is, you know? It, you know what? Upside, you'll get all the cool items because you're towards the back. <laughs> well, it, it, they also had the bikes. Yeah, this I, is so where they introduced this was the bikes. Yeah. Yep, first game that had and bikes. It was a big deal. Yeah. I remember I remember unlocking things and then you can unlock more of the, you know, you got the bikes. And I was like, this is pretty cool. And then I literally never played with any of the bikes. <laughs> like bikes, it just wasn't it, it, I just, from my from what some of the stuff i read from the developers some of the like depending on the track would dictate really if a bike was better for it or a cart was better for it i uh-huh. kind of like playing with bikes but uh but i i still was never really great at it now real quick before we continue on for my own experience with this game um i i played this a lot at friends houses in college and I remember I, I've referenced this before back all the way actually in Mario month last year. Uh, and we kind of did a follow up on it. I uh, must something about Mario month just brings up this topic. Pizza Tuesday. Pizza Tuesday was a friend <laughs> thing. It was like a like a friend group where every Tuesday we would hang out and eat pizza. We weren't very creative with our naming scheme. Uh, hey. why, what do you mean? You know, it's Pizza Tuesday. What do, what do you do there? Well, let me yeah, what, tell what you. What are you talking about? We eat pizza <laughs> on Tuesdays. Um, but no, we would. Ha- it was just me and a bunch of friends uh, from high school. We all kind of went to college together. Uh, well, some of them, some people went to different colleges, but we all were in the same area. And so we would hang out every Tuesday. And usually it was Smash Brothers. We played a ton of Smash Brothers Brawl nice. and Melee and whatnot. But we did play Mario Kart Wii because this was like more than anything we played a lot of Wii games at this time because that's when the like we when we were all hanging out the Wii was out that was like the mm-hmm. Nintendo system at the time that was the eco Nintendo ecosystem at the time um, oh, yeah. so i remember playing this and i i've said before on the series you know the Mario Kart games have never really been my forte I never really quite got into it and i enjoyed this well enough but I would say out of all the Mario Kart games I've played, this is the one I would have the most nostalgia for because we just played it a lot on at Pizza sure. Tuesday. But other than that, I never really had uh, much experience with it. Now, to to call back something you brought up before, 
um, I think it was you, Joe, who brought it up with the drifting and how like, you know, there's sparks and whatnot. This was one of the first games that you could either choose to manually drift or automatically drift, which Ah. definitely helped with uh, kind of fit in with the whole Wii design design philosophy of appealing to more than the core gaming audience appealing to casual oh, yeah. players and whatnot so now oh, yeah. you could either be a core you know if you're one of the hardcore players you could play on manual and it gave there was you were rewarded for that if you could figure out boosting if you could figure out drifting it would actually give you a boost if you do it automatically you you do it automatically so you do the turns better but you don't get that boost anymore. So it rewarded the skill players for being a little bit better than those who, who just did the automatic, um, which I think is kind of cool. And for the bikes, you, you're correct. It is the first game in the series to have bikes. And the reason for that, uh, Hideki Kono, the producer of the game, he was really big into extreme sports at the times and X games and whatnot. <laughs> and he actually wanted to include this in Mario Kart DS, but was not, but was unable to. And so in this, he added bikes in because he kind of wanted to do like a BMX style game. And so when he wasn't really allowed to, he just kind of said, well, I'm just going to include it in here. And that's why there's half pipes in some levels to kind of a- appease that whole X games, extreme sports idea that, excuse me he had going in his head but yeah sorry there is uh, you guys were still talking about some of the other stuff some of the 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 track so joe why were you not a fan of the um the bike okay so uh when you had the bikes there was it was the wheelie aspect of it um and from mm-hmm. my understanding i am i was never any good with the bikes i it just and i you are 100 percent correct when you said it, the track dictated which vehicle you would prefer to use which also usually your track dictated how heavy the character needed to be or how how not heavy a character should be if you had any kind of flight areas of it. Um, but um, the bikes had like a weird wheelie function that mm-hmm. I could not grasp because I think the wheelie was supposed to be what the boost was for the the, the vehicles. I, just, I have not played with a bike in this game in like a really long time, but if memory serves me right, the wheelies, they just, they were supposed to be better. But I did not enjoy that. I didn't. It was like unwieldy and I just couldn't handle it. And I was like, nope, this is too hardcore for me. I am not here for bikes. Give me my stupid carts and let me just drag them around with their little sparks. It was unwieldy. It was wieldy. <laughs> nice. Nice. The pun game is strong on this episode. It, Damn. We get it. We're getting it. <laughs> we are getting it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hey. Hey. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean. This game had a lot of cart variety. It also uh, added a lot of new things to the series. There's a lot of firsts in this game. It was not the first game that allowed online play in the Mario Kart series. Technically, that was Mario Kart DS, but it was mm-hmm. the first home console game that allowed online multiplayer, uh, which I've heard mixed things about. Like it was overall not great <laughs> in terms of connectivity. Yeah, it, like, did, it was in its did either of you try it? Um, yes. yes, we tried it. It's not. It, it was not great. I mean, you know, back then, internet was not nearly what it is now. Also, no. mm-hmm. yeah. you know, the online well, servers and networking is, I mean, even now it's still not great. But like back then, they were still trying to even work out those kinks with uh, okay. with that stuff. I, I, I can't remember if it was the, the Wii or the Switch. I think it was the Wii... Uh, or the Wii U, actually, now that I think about it, it might have been the Wii U, they they didn't have a way to in- plug in an actual, uh, you had to do Wi-Fi. I think the mm. Wii had the internet. They still had an Ethernet plug to it where you could actually plug the, e- the internet into it, right? Yeah. Well, they always had like the, the USB no, like No, they uh, didn't. The adapter. Switch didn't. The, the actual base gotcha. didn't have it. That's what I'm saying. One well, of, no, they had an adapter that you could plug uh, in. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, but the adapter didn't come out until like six months oh, yeah, later because there was nothing. <laughs> that you could, it was just, this was something I remember specifically because we wanted to play online and we couldn't immediately yeah and we had to mm. wait till i bought the damn adapter oh that's right and then yeah, we yeah, bought yeah. the adapter and it wasn't nothing internet wise was fast enough to actually hold a signal to be able to play it <laughs> uh-huh. so we just didn't yeah Fair. Well, i don't Fair. know if I that was that. necessarily your fault either most likely as we've seen with nintendo they don't really do online well it's not historically <laughs> they don't they, no. they have not been good with it yeah, yeah. The, you know, um, even like nowadays with the Switch, you still have to like with some of them, you have to have a separate app in order to oh, do yeah. some of the features. And it's like, man, you guys are making this difficult. <laughs> it's, it's on purpose I, because it's a family system. Yeah, I know. And they want to make sure they can track, you know, 
if, if you have your Nintendo Online account, there can be an IP address and there needs to be a phone number to it if you want to speak into games because they want to protect kids. That's from the understanding that I have. But. Sure. It's fair, but it still is frustrating a little bit. So, for example, My God, uh, yes. I just I just beat a um, on Twitter and Blue Sky. I've been keeping track of all the games I beat this year. And so literally before we recorded this, this will put a specific time and date for when pe- for when uh, if people go back and find this. I beat Super <laughs> Kiwi 64 on my switch. Um, by the way, if you love like N64 collectathon platformers, it's worth trying. It's like three bucks. It's only like an hour and a half long, super short, sweet game. Not nice. not difficult in the slightest. Like it's laughably easy. But in any case, <laughs> um, I wanted to take a. I, I tried to include a screenshot of the game so that way I can post it with my little like one tweet review type of thing. In order to get a screenshot off your switch, you have to <laughs> you take the screenshot with the you know the screenshot button. You go into the gallery, and then it says send to phone or send to yeah yep. send to your phone or something like that. So you select send to phone, and essentially a little a QR code pops up, which then allows you have to turn on your Wi-Fi, hit do a QR code scanner, scan the code. Um, and then it'll basically connect you to it'll give you the passcode to the switch. The switch turns into a s- small Wi-Fi hotspot that doesn't have any Internet. It's literally just meant to transfer the image file from the switch to your phone or whatever device you have. <laughs> and then it, that's it. It's so convoluted. I'm like, can't you just like email it to somebody? You're already connected to the internet. Just let me type in my email and just email me the picture. Like it shouldn't be that hard. I feel like this is so unnecessary. So I think it's that way. And I I agree with you. I have hundreds of Animal Crossing photos that I had to do like that. So I I believe me, I hear you. Uh, And then after a while, I just ignored that. And I just took the card out of the, the, the switch and just took them off the card instead. But I think it's like that because they know that, um, modern day people are doing everything on their phones anyway and you're not necessarily reading email or sending yourself an email but you are sending photos through lots of different social media apps so i think they thought oh sweet we'll just use the qr code have it talk directly to the switch have it be you know exactly what you said it's basically just a wi-fi hotspot and you're grabbing onto a hard drive that only does this one function so uh i think it's because they were like people are on their phones they're not going to want to email each other i i i i've been trying to figure out why they did it like that but but I can access I, my email from my phone. Like, it's not hard. I don't I don't get, like, everything. It's so much yeah. easier yeah. with your email. Like, well, anyway. You're not wrong. Yeah. yeah <laughs> anyway, this isn't true. Mario Kart Wii. This, that was, <laughs> I'm just ranting and raving about this. But uh, some of the other things they added with Mario Kart Wii, they added licenses, which is a, for a fancy term for just personal accounts. You know, your personal profile oh. on the on the on the Wii but it was kind of cool because if you look at the the snapshot you know basically it the license the the picture that they offer for the license effectively is show shows what each player has accomplished so you can see if you have a gold next to your you know whatever see it the there's a row for cc's and then there is a column for the cups columns are the cups uh, rows are which like difficulty you know 50 cc 100 cc Mm -hmm. 150 so on and so forth and then uh-huh. so if you if you get gold in the in the first cup it was the mushroom cup i want to say it is mm-hmm. um yeah. if you get gold in the mushroom cup then you then it and at 50 cc it'll appear in that top left corner if you get gold in the mushroom cup at 100 cc it'll still be in the far left column but now it's down on the second row so on and so forth so you can see wh- what each player's skill is so it'll be bronze if it's if they get bronze you know silver they get silver so on and so forth and you can see Hmm. all how how well they do i thought that was kind of cool it's a nice little touch that you can then you know i i would imagine as a kid you'd bring friends over be like hey guys check out how good i am at mario kart look at that full gold i i i I bet you there was like some type of expression that kids had back then like i'm not saying full gold was it but i could totally picture it Sure, yeah, like, especially that. because you know, like Nintendo doesn't do achievements. You know mm-hmm. that they, you know, famously they don't do achievements. So they, you know, instead, I guess this is probably a way so that way they could, like, like a personal achievements for this specific game. 
Um, mm-hmm. So that way you actually can, you know, this is your showing off. This is your, hey, I got a, a thousand points in this game type of thing, you know? Like, mm-hmm. I feel like that's what it, 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 it also was. And um, and I agree. This was definitely just like a, hey, look, everybody, I was able to do all this stuff. Uh, isn't that pretty cool? And I do think it is. Um, it, it's a it's a nice addition that they didn't have to do. Um, and it also went with like their whole like me characters that they're doing mm-hmm. at the time as well. Um, which, you know, I know you could also play as your me characters in this, which was also kind of cool because mm-hmm. uh, we all made we ca- uh, me characters on the Wii and yep. we all played as them <laughs> sometimes. And that was that was a whole lot of fun as well. My me never got played with. I played with Daisy when she was That's unlocked. True, I did. always played with Daisy. <laughs> but it, but it, outside of that, I mean, whatever, whoever was nobody else wanted to play with, I would play with. <laughs> but I really loved seeing like Troy's Troy's me was fantastic. Oh, Amanda's yeah, me was. was great. Like everybody's me's looked like them, so it was really fun. And real quick, listeners, Troy is one of the other co-hosts of Taste of Dragons, who has been on the show once before. He was on the Assassin's Creed episode way back. I want to say in winter 2021 like december 2021 oh yeah that's right oh my goodness yeah. Yeah. man time just never stops does it no it does not <laughs> <laughs> now you you mentioned the the Mies. what was interesting is the programmer one of the programmers who worked on this game got pulled away by miyamoto during development to work on the me channel so while they did lose a programmer, it ended up being a blessing in disguise. And this is from the Awada Asks. Um, Hideki Kono says, and I quote, but as a result of that, meaning the producer getting pulled away, or the programmer, excuse me, we were able to introduce a lot of cool features into Mario Kart Wii. The spectator stands are full of cheering me's, and they can be seen in the course backgrounds. For example, the Yoshi Sphinx may be on the track, but then all of a sudden he may be your father's me. From a technological perspective, that wouldn't be possible without fully understanding how me's, how the me's work, end quote. Uh, huh. So that, that's kind of cool, though. Like, So me's would actually come into the game in more ways than just you playing at them they could appear in the stands or as we saw in the the yoshi sphinx it may be your dad just staring down on you with judgment <laughs> who knows <laughs> You're, yeah yeah it's true and i i do think that was one of the really really cool things about the wii and it was all about uh you know like you said marketability and opening it up to the mainstream where like you know you could put something in there that looks like you and then see that in the background, you know, or, you know, make a make one for your grandmother and then see them, you know, cheering you on in the stands. Um, and, you know, it wasn't just with this game it was with a lot of their games. And I think that definitely helped with the with the whole uh, blockbuster nature of the Wii console. Um, mm. And that was yeah, super unique, super cool. Um, and I. Yeah, like I said, we we all played as ourselves sometimes. We would just have an entire race where it was just our me characters. <laughs> we, would, we would be like, I'm literally throwing this red shell at you uh, <laughs> specifically. <laughs> it's true. Vengeance was a key factor. And who cares if you win as long as this other person gets not one. Exactly. <laughs> and, you know, like you know, so, sometimes when you're playing, you're like, oh, I don't remember who Bowser was, you know, who was playing as Bowser. But I definitely know who has that hair. And <laughs> you're going down. <laughs> I could just imagine how much more personal everything felt, you know, like now it wasn't like, like Mario hitting you with a shell. Like you said, it was you, you were, I wonder if that this escalated feuds between friends because now right? it was much more personal. <laughs> That's so I can tell funny. you it did. <laughs> it did? <laughs> oh, yeah. oh God. I can tell you it did. <laughs> Some of the other things that made this game unique because it was on the Wii was also the addition of the Mario Kart Wii channel or the the chan- which I always the channels on the Wii were such an interesting and bizarre idea. Like uh, for all intents and purposes, they were just apps. They were just programs yeah. on your Wii. But I guess because, you know, analog TVs and everything like no one had really seen something like that. The, the, the closest thing you would see at the time was the uh, 360 and the PS3, but the PS3 came out. I want to say the same year as the Wii. And excuse me, the 360 had only come out two years prior and, uh, you know, it had the, 
the red ring of death issue. So there was a whole bunch of issues that it was experiencing early in its life cycle. So it, what's kind of wild to me, if you really think about it, like this era of gaming between the 360 Wii and PS3, each major player had a very unique and different way of tackling. How do we communicate, you know, like a menu system and a UI to our users to play on these systems? Like, you know, the Wii had channels. The PS3, what was it? It had that weird, like, you know, I don't know what you would even call it. They had a name for it because the PSP used the exact same system. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Where it was like, you yeah, go, yeah, yeah. you'd move left and right, and then you could, that would essentially be like categories of stuff. You know, like there was the game category. So that's where your save files were. That's where your downloaded yeah. games were. That's where your disc was. And then there was, mm-hmm. you know, PS online and the Wii kind of had something similar where, but they had the weather. Remember the weather channel? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was, it was very <laughs> just weird and unique. And, and like these, all these consoles also came out you know, prior to the iPhone and the app store being a thing. Yeah. So like, you know, this is just all of them trying to implement their own version of, you know, whatever they were trying to do. Cause, and, and, and Nintendo went with channels. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just so uh, the, we, I, I want to do an episode on the, Wii at some point, but I remember in doing research a while ago about it, like one of the things that we was really trying to do was to, in a sense, and they marketed it better for sure. Remember when the Xbox One came out and every it it flubbed its launch because it was trying to be the all in one thing. You know, it was trying to be your cable box. Mm-hmm. It was trying to be your your game system. It was trying to be everything. And then it mm-hmm. had all that always online online DRM bullshit and this and that. If you really think about it, the Wii was supposed like the Wii kind of was like that at one point too like you were meant to leave your Wii in rest mode all the time like they're they apparently they originally had the idea of like the light on the Wii was going to change color depending on like what time of day it was and stuff like that and like I, I forget I I'm butchering this explanation I have to redo the research but it was meant to be on not like actually on but like always on in some way shape or form whether it's in rest mode or otherwise yeah, it was always giving you some sort of information uh, yeah. that you could use in your everyday life. Yeah, I, I remember that as well. And I, I forget exactly what it was supposed to do as well. Like if it was supposed to be like if it's rainy outside or if it's, you know, like forecasting the weather or whatever it was. Yeah, there was definitely something with that ring light that was supposed to be different. And yeah, they, they were again, this was uh it was only 15 years ago, but like it still seems like a lifetime ago as far as what they were trying to do with all of their different consoles and their, and what they were implementing and what their programmers were coming up with and their producers, you know, like all their creatives, what they were doing at that time uh, was pretty innovative Uh, and not everything caught on obviously, but it it definitely carries on through even modern day. Now. I think Nintendo's Mm -hmm. always been really good at that though. They're not, they don't not, not to, you know, praise them. They've done plenty, (laughs) you know, they've done, they've made some stinkers. We all know that. Um, but the, I think that a lot of the time with the way they develop is they're not, they don't care about how video games are being played right now. They are trying to figure out how games are going to be played 10 or 15 or 20 years from now. They want you to continue playing with the Wiimote with something, you know, they want you to keep moving. They want you to, you know, there's just a lot of uh, that kind of accessibility and, and continued the, accessibility to other people as well, instead of just hardcore gamers. To steal a point from Retronaut, something that Jeremy Parrish has said a few times, and I, I kind of agree with, Nintendo, before getting into the games industry, was a toy menu. I mean, there were a lot of things. That, you know, the, mm-hmm. Infamously, yeah. they had cards. the love hotels and cards. Yeah. The Hanafuda cards was their first thing, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, but they were a toy manufacturer for like a solid decade before they got into video games. And Jeremy has... I don't know if it's technically been proven, but he kind of speculates and theorizes. I kind of agree with it that they never really lost that toy making mentality. And you can see it, how they design their systems. The only system they truly tried to design as like a, Hey, we're going to try to powerhouse this thing was the GameCube, And it, didn't do well uh it, it didn't sell well the Wii, they basically did so such minimal upgrades in terms of hardware and tech and whatnot and went more for like well how 
do how will people actually play this and that's and then the Wii took off they butchered the Wii U for various reasons it's an underloved and underappreciated system it's much better than it than what people have you believe in my opinion 100% agree. but agreed <laughs> it, the Wii U was actually a great system just not well made for not well developed for in any case Correct. and then this the switch if you really think about it they they it reinvented the wheel again with how people play games and they they also had amiibos which is a, a kind of an extension of that toy mentality and to bring it back to Mario Kart Wii they packaged this game with a toy wheel that you can put into that you can put the Wii mote in and literally physically turn the wheel like it's an actual steering wheel and steer Mario Kart. We've we talked about it um a little like we not even we alluded to it lightly just talking about like playing with the the wheel. Like that was the new control scheme. You could play with the Wii mote and the nunchuck. You could also plug in your GameCube controller and play with the GameCube controller if you wanted to. But then you could also play with the wheel. And it was really simple controls. You turn left and right by turning left and right, and you hit the two button or the two on the Wii mote, and that's accelerate. And that's it. That's all you have to really do. And then one was break. So for casual players, since that's what the Wii was marketing to, that's so simple. All I have to do mm-hmm. is just hit two. I just hold the gas button and gas brake button, and, and I can physically turn the remote. I don't have to worry about hit which buttons I'm touching or which am I hitting the left D pad or the right D pad or any of this other stuff. You can just do it. The D pad instead, uh, when you were controlling with motion controls, was used to for your items. You could either hit forward to throw the item forward, or hit back or down to throw the item behind you. Then there was a B button, which was this kind of like a, a proto trigger type of thing. It was on the your, the back left side of the controller, um, and well, from the, how you're holding it in the in the wheel, I should say. And Correct, yeah. that was that was used for drifting if if you wanted to use it. But if you didn't want to use it, like we said before, you could set it on automatic, and you wouldn't really have to worry about it. And it just that you would you just to also illustrate how serious Nintendo takes its toy-like mentality. Do you know how many iterations of that damn wheel they made before it came up with the the one that we see here, the one that we have? No, I don't know how many. About 30. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) About 30 different iterations of the Wii wheel were made. Some of them had like... uh, like if you go to the Iwata S, you can see pictures of it. Some of them had the Wii mote up towards the top of the wheel, so there's like kind of like two little sides poke. Two of the sides of the Wii mote were poking out of the top. Others were more square because it's more like how go karts design their wheels. Oh um, yeah, yeah. And surprisingly enough, the the you know how the back of the wheel that has this blue ring that's also the symbol that's used, I think for the Wii as well as for Mario Kart Wii. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, correct. Apparently, that blue ring cost a lot of money to add and it was not needed it's literally there for aesthetics that's it <laughs> visual flair that's that's so nintendo to just add something just because it it makes it look better mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> and and you were right with the the accessibility because you mm-hmm. know if you want to play you know your games like you came out with you know the Wii, Wii sports and you know everybody can bowl everybody can hit tennis because everybody knows how that works and it was the same way with this everybody knows how a steering wheel works you know you can you can hand a steering wheel to your grandfather or to your grandmother and Uh they could they they know exactly the controls they know how to you know steer left steer right all i have to do is just hit a button like you said and that accelerates Uh, whereas if you hand them a controller it's it's not as intuitive um if you're it's your, it's your first time whereas in steering mm-hmm. wheel it's never your first time it's it's you're just going so yeah that it was a very smart addition to a very mainstream game uh that they were going for and with the the wheel and like you said the um to keep it mainstream they went during the play testing with some of these people who aren't necessarily core gamers they noticed that when they were turning the wheel 
they would drastically move their body from side to side. They would, you know, you know how like you put your whole body oh, yeah. into it. When, <laughs> exactly. So they try to have the game react to that. So it was it wouldn't just necessarily react. So if you like lean to the left a little bit, Mario's going to react, or they tried to make Mario react at least a little bit, uh, uh, which is it's cool. Like that's something cool. Yeah. That's like really smart uh, play testing. Uh, another way that you could interact with other people in the game, since this game was all about interaction, though, I mean, that's the Wii. The Wii's moniker was, you know, you play together. It's, you know, mm-hmm. we play together. Um, that that was like a huge marketing po- point of the Wii. I, re- I remember, like, I think even the will you play, will you play with me or something was like, I don't remember. There was like this weird commercial, remember, of like some dude walking around to people's houses and like giving them a Wiimote. It was two guys. They would show up at your door and they I would say, will you play with me? And it would turn into like, we you yep. play with me. And the two of them were the they would turn into the we the actual the eyes of the we. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I that's what I remember. Um, so, yeah, the, one of the other ways that you could do that, there was matchmaking on the online multiplayer. We already mentioned the online multiplayer. The matchmaking would pair you up based relatively based on your skill you could also download quote unquote a ghost of another player and watch them race and try to beat their time uh there was also ghost battles where you could get a random player's ghost who was around the same level as you uh, with the mario kart channel that would kind of that was where this all kind of was housed and you could race against their ghost so it's kind of a cool way to like challenge yourself and in general there was just there was then the developers ghosts uh where you could just pl- do time trials and try to beat their time and see if you could get all i, b- I believe like if you what is it uh there i think wasn't there something for getting all the ghosts or beating all the ghosts or something like that and there there might have been i don't i didn't do that part of it very much uh it was mainly just versus modes so i didn't really mm. do the ghost mode all that much i did and i'm trying to remember what you got from it though because i know that the dry bone the the route the the bones bowser like the dry bowser he mm. was you got you didn't get him from that you got him from i think getting a gold on all of the 150 cc ones yeah. I think that's how you got him. I'm trying to remember who you got or what you got. There was there was something, some achievement of some sort. I have to think about it. I am not quite sure off the top of my head. But I do think we should go into talking about what are some of the things they they added to this game? Like we talked a little bit about, we, I mean, we talked a lot about the additions of like multiplayer and the the uh, extreme sports and all that other stuff. Um, in Mario Kart Wii, there were sixteen new tracks and sixteen throwbacks, and I think we should all at least shout out our favorite track. And I wonder if we're all going to have a similar answer. I feel like there's like one really popular answer that everyone goes <laughs> to, but but we'll see. For the 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 throwback tracks from the previous games they had a pretty good mix of you know super nintendo n64 ds let me actually let me see here real quick there's one two three four four different games from the ds from the gamecube there is one two three four 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 games for the from the gamecube i wonder if there's like four from each uh Super um, Nintendo, I'm seeing about four, possibly. I'd have to, I'd have to double check, but it seems like they, uh, yeah, they kind of have it all spread out for the most part. I, there's probably not four each, but there's a decent amount. Like the 16 retro tracks, and then obviously all all the new ones. Do you have? Do either of you have any favorite tracks from both either retro? Well, no, let's try to stick to the new ones because retro was already, you know, all these tracks appeared. All the all those tracks appeared in other games. So any from any of the tracks from this game that were new to this game, any of that stick out to you personally? I can't remember which ones were new. I, there's been too many Mario Karts now that my brain has mished all of the tracks together, especially after the latest Mario Kart where they just keep bringing in old tracks. But I can't remember which ones were new from that. I just always I always gravitate to whatever the Rainbow Road is for that Mario oh, Kart. God. And, oh, no. and just because oh, of no. how ridiculous it is, like my, my I love going into it for the very first time going, all right, what craziness have they thrown into this one? Um, and oh, so no, that's no. what I always love oh, doing. God, no, I for me, I mean, just favorite tracks in general. I mean, you've always got like your classics, your your Yoshi's waterfalls, your your uh, Moo Moo Meadows, you know, your simplicity ones, the peach gardens. 
the like the ones mm-hmm. that have like a fun season change to them every time. Yeah, but I think um the the Cookie Land. There's a cookie track that's uh, basically like um uh, a Kirby Yoshi's Cookie kind of like just a it's a dumb track, but it's really great. I like that one was <laughs> one of my favorites. Fair, fair. Um, I was personally a fan of Coconut Mall. I Coconut Mall is just so silly and fun. I'm also a fan of just mall. I'm a fan of malls, like in real life, like IRL. I like malls. Um, <laughs> I always wanted to. This is a bit of a tangent. I always wanted to pull a Kevin Smith and just be a mall rat for a day, and like, like <laughs> call call out of work and just hang out in a mall all day long. Um, mm-hmm. I could honestly probably still do that, but I'd feel guilty now that I'm a dad. I'm like, sorry, kid, I'm not going to stay home and help your mom take care of you. I'm going to hang out at a mall all day. <laughs> I don't I don't think right? I can get away with that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really like the uh, the Bowser's Castle that they had from I think it was from uh, Nintendo 64. Um, mm. That one that one was a lot of fun. That was um, a great level. I mean, most things involving Bowser is almost always guaranteed to be a good time. So, um, yeah, I think this one had um, the Mushroom Gorge as well. That was one of the flying areas the, that you always had the. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I that think was this is one of the ones that I. I mean, was there flying in other? You know what? I don't even remember. There, the thing is, like, there's so many of these games. They they introduce new things, but since they repeat so many of them as the series goes on, it's hard to remember exactly which game it uh appears in right. you know like yeah, the flying game, yeah. came in on the 64 and i want to say the gamecube oh, one had it had a decent okay. amount of flying in it as well but i think it was just like the upgraded everything had you know yeah who you knows i think i remember considering i did an episode on mario kart 64 <laughs> already but these all are blurring to, i i'm going right? crazy y'all it's it's <laughs> been a mario kart month of just buried head first into mario kart and actually uh speaking of other things that were new to this game there's lots of uh lots of racers in this game there was 26 racers in this yeah. game yeah. Uh, i think funky kong this is his first appearance it's also rosalina's first appearance which makes sense because yep. she was in mario galaxy yep. um it was also dry bowser's first appearance mm-hmm. uh baby daisy was also new uh there's and a bunch Peach. of baby peach and were all the babies new no baby mario and no 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 just baby mar just baby peach and baby uh baby daisy Daisy. because we didn't get baby Roz until i want to say the late at this newest one yes there was one yeah um there was also a bunch of new power-ups uh i think we were talking a bit about it off mic just trying to remember because there's so many power-ups but like the the thundercloud which was new to the console mario karts i guess they were on the arcades prior to this i'm not entirely sure um but the thundercloud there's also the pow block which is kind of like the thundercloud like the lightning but slightly worse like pow so the lightning strikes every racer um or maybe the pal's even better i'm trying to remember so i was watching a video and they said the pal was like a worse version of lightning but now that i'm reading the wiki maybe it's the other way around lightning strikes every racer ahead of the user causing them to spin out and shrink and lose all their items mm-hmm. um the pal block appears and i bl- it, believe it does every single player no matter what i uh, want to say i think yeah, that's right that sounds right but if I you don't are remember the pal- I, I don't remember getting the pal block almost ever it, it was one of those the, that like just never spawned. <laughs> well, the crazy thing is it only affects players on the ground. So if you see the pow block, if you're able to, if you're lucky enough to be going off of a jump right when that the pow's going to hit, then because, uh... you know, it appears above you and it'll slowly shrink down like a pow block does in the game. So you have some time to react. So if you can find, if you can either hop at the right time or you can, I don't know if hopping actually works, but if you can go off a jump at the right time, it does not affect you. The thundercloud, honestly, a super cool idea for an item where essentially it's a it's a power up that's not actually a power up; it's more of a debuff. So if you get the item and you get the thundercloud, you have like a like ten seconds or so uh, where it's it'll the cloud will hover above you, and you have ten seconds unless you drive into and bump into another racer, then it passes the thundercloud over to them. And if you can do that before the 10 seconds is up, 
uh, then you don't get struck by lightning. But if you don't, if you can't pass it along, then you get struck by lightning. So it's kind of a cool idea where it's like they it's a it's a debuff for the player, but it turns it, it adds a new wrinkle of complication to the to the mechanic where it's like, well, you it's a debuff, but you can pass it. You can hot potato this thing. It's kind yeah. of cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, and I think the other new item is like the the Mega Mushroom, which I think was one of my favorite items because you could just flatten people with that thing. And it's mm-hmm. so satisfying to just, <laughs> especially if you're using your me characters, it's just so satisfying. Just completely destroying people in front of you. <laughs> it's like a demolition derby almost. Exactly, yeah. And I, I think that's, that's the item I think I remember the most. And I... I, I I loved using the most from that game. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, I mean, if you if you can get it, of course, it's always it's oh, oh, always of course, yeah, hit or miss with everything. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I don't have too much else to to add to this. I will say, you know, when I'm doing these uh, episodes, I usually go into the Mario Wiki just to see if that like what are some of like the oddly specific things that like you don't know like in the in the Game Boy Advance one for Super Circuit it, it was all about the which racers like when you're playing against pe- like the computer players depending on the character you choose determines which racer is going to be going to race strongest against you um so that that was cool to see in this mm-hmm. what i find odd is like there is a bizarrely technical breakdown of every single every single vehicle and its stats it is. They were so uneven, though. That's why they were. So, it was so massively uneven. <laughs> uh, I don't understand what I'm looking at, though. <laughs> like it's literally yeah. just all points. Like yeah. standard Mario Kart. Uh, okay, so the standard. So for example, for medium vehicle stats, the standard Kart M is four point three one. I'm guessing that's like tons or pounds or whatever. It, it whatever that weight's supposed to be. Standard mm-hmm. speed seventy nine point seven seven kilometers an hour. Fair enough. While steering, it just goes 0.9943. I'm assuming that's like percentage, you know, like 99.43% of its max speed while steering. Maybe gotcha. I'm, not, I'm really not quite sure. But then uh-huh. it says acceleration while not drifting. And I guess that's like 0.59 kilometers per hour. In, but then it goes S2, S1, S2, S3, S4, and then E. I'm like, it's you don't shift gears i don't understand what these s's are for <laughs> do do you guys do you know what they're talking about with this no i'm not i'm not a professional mario kart player i i, I feel like when people do that it's almost as if like when they do it for um when they do it for like super smash brothers or whatever when they start doing when they start counting the frames of like iframes and they start like yeah. you know what's what's the what's the amount that you knock somebody up you know, depending on your distance from them, like wave dashing and all that other stuff. I feel like if there's a competitive aspect to it, and it really it seems to be like gravitating towards like Nintendo stuff specifically, like people get into that and mm-hmm. they like break it as far down as they can. They're like, oh, you know, let me, you know, do whatever. And I feel like it kind of is like nowadays worth like you know hey can i beat elden ring using just my feet like i feel like it's like that kind of thing where you know people just get so into something that they want to find like the next thing or they want to find you know the little nuances and what how they could you know min max the best that they can um and yeah i don't understand any of what you said because that is not me (laughs) i okay i i okay only because of F zero. Do I understand any of the things you've said out loud? Okay. Um, okay. Please. No, I, do, I don't remember how important they are, but I I played a lot of F zero uh, in my day. And shout out to the the bike, the F zero bike. By the way, that was probably that one and the cheap cheap were the best bikes in the whole game. No, they were not really the best bikes, but they were my favorites. Fair. So shout out mm. to them. <laughs> um, but the there's a lot of it had to do with um the the handling, like the 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 grade it got had to do with the handling, the traction, the speed, the, those things that keep it on the ground, like all the all the physics of it all. A lot of it's that. Uh, I don't remember exactly how many there were or which, you know, which ones did what, but I do recall a lot of it from F-Zero, and I'm pretty sure if I turn that on, I will remember a lot more of it. 
I forgot that how how deep that went in Mario Kart. Though. Jeez, it's insane. I don't like everything is just like decimals and shit. I don't know what it like. It it gives me nothing to compare it to. Like it, there's no un, like unit of measurement. Like at least with the speed, it tells you it's kilometers per hour, and then the while steering. I'm a, I'm once again just assuming it's percentage, but when it goes to acceleration, what's the point five nine? Is that point five nine kilometers per second or like per second i, I don't so know there'll be it, it's probably 0.59 is actually a, from whatever the neutral state state is so we don't know what neutral is we don't know which card is considered the neutral cart where everything is at, at zero everything's at one it's probably the mar like literally mario's cart i would assume but i i don't know which or which bike was the neutral yeah so maybe they only accelerates you know uh 0.59 versus one so yeah. they, you know half 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 is, acceleration half acceleration as far as it's, something else maybe it's like the I don't like know. I, I was, I'm liking it to the 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 F zero bars where you'd have your acceleration, you know, and it, instead of giving you a percentages of any kind or decimals, they'd give you literally a bar that shows you all the different stats in a chart, essentially. And you know, you mm. see the green bar up and down, up and down on the acceleration, on the speed, on the uh, recovery, on the traction, like on those parts, a boost. Like for me, I barely boosted almost ever. So I didn't, I never cared if something had good boost or, you know, or not. I just wanted something that would go really, really fast and stay going fast and continue accelerating if I was able to get a good stretch. But if, if it was a, a course with a ton of curves and everything in it, you, you don't pick a car like that or a bike like that. You'd pick something that had better acceleration. So it would, you know, you'll be slowing down on turns. You're going to need more acceleration. And it would tell you which, you know, I'm, I'm assuming those stats are based on those things. <laughs> What's got the best the acceleration? <laughs> <laughs> the the I did do a, just a little bit more reading on the wiki. The S one two three, like the S one through four, is essentially just the gears you're in. So S one is like oh. gear is like first gear, but it's all done automatically. So it's just basically telling you at in every gear this is what your acceleration speed is, which makes That's sense so because cool. when you so like S one it's at point seven two eight. S two is also point. Sorry, this is for the standard cart S for small vehicles. Um, 0. 0.728, 0. 0.728 for S1 and 2, but S3 it drops down to 0. 0.5034, and then when you're into the four, into fourth gear, it's at 0. 0.07034, and I guess E maybe that's like I don't know what E stands for. It I'd have to double check, but yeah, it that's interesting. Um, that's that's yeah. really interesting. That's wild to me that it's that in depth. Um, hey, now do you? Have, do you I guys just have realized anything? something though. Did you oh, guys realize I, this is something I completely did not realize while playing either. I don't think I've ever noticed this. I didn't realize all the different carts actually changed color pending on the character you were playing. These are I dumb don't. things that I'm just now noticing right now. But I, I was like, you know what? The cheap cheap was really cool. I'm going to go look up the stats on that cart. And I'm looking at it and pending on the character you were playing, the cheap cheap would change color as well. And that's so cool. That's if really you played cool. as the dark gray, if you played as the like dry bones, and the he had a, a literal like gray toned cheap cheap it's so mm. cool sorry <laughs> sorry about it's that it's little things like that though that that are like i don't know i like small attention to detail things like that 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 aren't necessary but if you notice it you really appreciate it mm -hmm. okay. you know, yeah. they didn't need to change the color of the racer the, the carts at all really yeah agreed agreed now I don't have much more to add to this for Mario Kart Wii. I was going to go into just like listener, the listener section with like comments and whatnot. But I want to throw it over to you guys real quick. Is there anything that you'd like to touch on that we didn't talk about? Anything? Like, oh, actually, you know what? There is one thing uh, at the very least. I will, I'll still throw it over to you and then we can move on to this. Um, mm -hmm. I want to talk about just the visual overall visuals and uh, music of the game but before we move on to that do you have any final thoughts and comments on the gameplay and the items and all the all that good stuff for me really the main thing is is how um universal this game ended up being um as far as i know this is like the second highest selling mario kart game and that's only after the new one that they've released in like a million different iterations and yep. I, I think that's because it's just so, um, you know, you can get into it so easily. It's it's just so adaptive. It's it's, and and I think that's it's carrying the series forward, which is why they probably haven't released a new Mario Kart in forever because like, it, they're just iterated on it so well, 
And I feel like this was definitely like the stepping stone for that. Um, and yeah, that, that's that's my final thought on this. I think for me, I, I really loved watching people find the glitches in this game. I watched a lot of people yeah. like speed runners, like, especially. The, oh, God, right, yeah. it's wild. The, the ways they came, the, the things they figured out that were actually glitches and like just start start in reverse and then turn to the left and you'll see there's like an actual like pixel off and you drive towards that and it'll clip you into this thing and then you're in the air and i'm like i can't i'm never gonna be that cool but wow did i love people watching like watching people break the game i just loved it it was so cool i i watched the games done quick somewhat recently of someone doing that doing this or speed running this game and on the coconut mall level they essentially like they somehow knock you out they knock the racer out of bounds into the parking lot in the center of the track so all you have to do is just drive around the really tiny thing in the center like the, the parking lot in the center of the track because it hits all the race triggers uh, and so oh that's and, so and, great it's wild to see like if you had a chance to watch it it's one of the weirdest things i've ever seen it was really cool really nice. really really cool but um no i for for me with this the the only real thing i have to add to the gameplay before we talk about visuals and music is uh i i don't like the motion controls at all i think the motion controls Agreed. are an abomination i don't <laughs> enjoy them in the slightest i was playing it on my wii for this and i was like I, I gotta play with the motion controls that's how you're supposed to play it now admittedly i did not have the wii wheel but even so it really just did not feel good like it's either too sensitive or not sensitive enough like i could never find the sweet spot for turns it just i never felt in control of my cart versus when i played i literally was i, I played you know double dash on a freaking emulator and i felt 10 times more control on that than i did on uh, like original hardware wii with motion controls it just yeah i it, i don't like it it's not my favorite i think i understand why they did it and i think it was i think it was an absolute necessity because it sold the game to the casual audience which is what it needed which is what the wii was supposed to do and i think exactly. it's one of the most genius things they could have done i just don't like it <laughs> I, I, uh, I genuinely don't like it agreed and that goes back to at the very beginning when we were all you know passing around controllers and there was always at least one controller inside the wii wheel just because and it was just man if you ended up with that you're passing that to somebody else there was a reason that kept on getting passed around because that always came in last <laughs> you know it's like it's like one person always has to be jaws and golden eye and one person gets to be uh odd job exactly you know, someone's <laughs> going to get dicked over and, and someone's going to get the advantage it's just how it right. is it's just how multiplayer gaming works now exactly in terms of the visuals and music, I don't I'm I'm awful at it. I'm just going to be honest. I'm awful at describing these. I will say I think overall I don't like the color palette of this game. I think it's a little too muted and pastelly. I don't know how else to describe it. The I was watching a Scott the Waz video, his, uh, his video about this, and I kind of agree with his one point where everything feels a little bit fuzzy. There's like this weird fuzz to over top of the visuals like if, if you go back to even just what double dash had just a few years earlier like that looks a lot more visually interesting than this this like the colors are just kind of muted i don't know what do you what do you both think okay so i agree they are muted but i think it is because of the hardware itself and the time this came out double dash was able to look that way because we were we were all playing it on the tiny screen Double Dash was the, the DS one, right? Yeah. I was making sure we're talking about the same no, one. No, no, that's the GameCube one. The GameCube one. Oh, it's even, oh my God, it's even better. The GameCube one, <laughs> uh, while the uh, hardware was very alike in the two things, we were also moving into high-def television. And I think TVs had already gotten... Like, when the Wii came out, TVs were already getting to that place where they were so much better, everything was better looking, that no matter what we were playing on our Wii, it did not look that good. 
like no games really looked that good on this. I, I remember I don't playing know. Mario um, Kart, Mario Galaxy looks beautiful still like on a you know what? TV. I'll, I'll give you that. Some stunning. games they really cared about. They did some good. Sure. They did a good job not changing oh, so it, not having too many colors. One. I see what you're saying. Sorry, I keep cutting you off. No, 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 no worries. Like like looking back or looking at like a screenshot of it. Yeah, like now that you mentioned it, looking at Rainbow Road really does look like Pastel Road versus <laughs> Rainbow Road. <laughs> <laughs> I maintain I, I I blamed a lot of things on the Wii when I was really my TV a lot of the time. True. So I, I guess I don't have a good idea of the way this looked at that point because I think of like Twilight Princess was the Wii and the GameCube one, right? That came out mm-hmm. and released. Yeah. I remember playing that on my GameCube and liking the way it looked, and then I and playing it on my Wii and I played it on the Wii first and I did not like it. I don't. I also agree. I don't really like motion controls for anything that needs to be actually accurate in any way. When you're playing yeah. a Wii Sport, perfectly fine. You're playing with all your friends, perfectly fine. You're supposed to be having a good time. It's not really about winning or losing. Great. But if it's about actually doing something and getting it done right, those motion controls are garbage. They're really horrible. I'm not a fan. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> I'm, I had nothing but curse words. But for the visual of this, I actually really liked the visuals in this game. I didn't have, I, I guess, I don't know. I, I didn't. It did not. Uh, it did not affect me in the way, uh-huh. it, and I, I usually complain about things being fuzzy or not looking good too. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I don't have bad feelings about this one. I feel like the. Um, I do feel like some of it is hardware based because um, if you go back and you play it on like you know an emulator that you can you can uh, upres it, you can you know put it at modern day um resolutions that type of stuff it definitely does look better definitely looks sharper um and but yeah i think the hardware is definitely the reason for the fuzziness the fuzziness i think they did what they could with it and then they're like all right we need to kind of de-res this in order to make it run at a proper frame rate Mm -hmm. um that's what i think do we know we 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 only had 30 frames per second on that right or did we get 60 no it was definitely 30 there was those we only had 30 frames per second on the wii right i believe so yeah I mean, I don't know off the top of my head. I'm gonna I, go yeah, yeah, I just have to know now. Now I have to know. <laughs> I do Damn know, pressure. like, depending on if you like, if you're playing split screen multiplayer or anything like that, then it would affect the frame rate, which makes mm-hmm. sense because you're like quadrupling what is being done on screen. Exactly. But in general, I, I don't know just standard. I now to be clear, my criticisms of the visuals, I don't think it's a bad looking game. I just think comparatively to what I've seen of the other Mario Karts, just like the overall like aesthetic design is just not my favorite. Like, listen, I understand, you know, just thinking of like the most recent one, you know, Mario Kart 8, I understand it's not going to look as good as that. That's in full HD. Mm-hmm. excuse me it's got like over a de- i mean well when that came out it wasn't a decade but it was you know <laughs> it's got a lot more time in, in between that you know like i get it, it you know it's going to be different however i still think like other games in this series still look pretty good like hell i if we're going with just 3d double dash i think looks better than this i think uh even like super circuit looks pretty good considering it's a 2d game i don't know this doesn't look bad just to be clear i'm not saying this is a bad looking game i just think from the aesthetics thing i just wish it was like a little bit more vibrant like the mm-hmm. colors it's it's colorful but it's not vibrant and i just wish it was a little bit more vibrant um, I, I definitely agree with that especially coming off of a lot of their other games which are you know, Wind Waker is vibrant. Like, like there's a lot of vibrant games, and I do feel like Nintendo is kind of known for being bright and colorful. And uh, yeah, this was very non-saturated. I want to say that's fair. That's um, a fair. Assessment. For for their games, specifically for their games, I feel like this is a definitely desaturated version of it. For sure. Um, I don't. I don't have much to add with with the because I kind of talk about over about the overall aesthetics with the music. I I don't it's it's good music as with Mario Kart in general. It's it's once again like solid music. I do know some people don't like this soundtrack as much as others. Like they, I I was listening to another podcast. I forget which it, it might have been the Super Mercado Bros, but they were saying they don't like the music from Mario Kart Wii. If I if I re- I could be completely wrong. It's been like a year and a half since I listened to that episode, but mm-hmm. I don't have an issue with it. It's not bad. It's it's it. Once again, I one of my biggest problems like problems with my with myself, and that's why I, kind of why I've been doing this whole mario kart uh series for mario month and mario mania this year is 
that like I, I I don't pay attention enough to the Mario Kart games, but the music just never sticks out to me, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think th- that if anything, if it did stick, if it did stick out to me, it's either because it's outrageously good or outrageously bad, and yeah, obviously it's hard to make make it outrageously good. I think this is just good, solid music because it doesn't, it doesn't take anything away from the experience and it kind of, it sets a, it sets a good vibe. That's a good way to describe it. The soundtrack of this this game sets a really nice vibe. Yeah, I I agree. And I, and not on the music, but on the sound effects, um, one of the things I really did enjoy is as you're playing your individualized stuff would come out of your own speaker on your, on your controller so, you know, if you throw a blue shell, you would hear that come out of your speaker. Um, and uh, I, I, I really enjoyed that. You know, again, uh, just the tiny personal touches that they would do with this um, that I hadn't experienced before. Um, and as far as the soundtrack is concerned, yeah, I agree. It, it it didn't do a disservice to it. It was definitely just like, sweet, this is not interfering with anything that I'm doing right now. And, you know, not everything has to be bangers. Everything can just be really nice, easygoing music that Nintendo does. Joe, do you have any thoughts on the music? I have a, I always have so many thoughts about Nintendo <laughs> music and music in general. But um, I do think that um, the, uh, one of the composers or, or the musical arrangement of the people who worked on it was um, Asuka Hayazaki. Um, mm-hmm. And she had done the arrangements for the, later. She had done the, the Wind Waker HD rearranging for the for the for the new digital versions of the things. And um, she had worked on um, one of the Animal Crossing games and a few other uh, Yoshi, a couple a couple games. So I I felt like um, the the very whimsical nature of the games that she had previously worked on. I think her first game was um, Zelda Four Swords or one of the Zelda okay. one of the one of those. So like she has a she had a very interesting take i think on some of them most of the tracks are going to have the same kind of i mean it's going to be that nostalgia driven like oh i love yeah. this song but i i did i kind of liked it i kind of liked a lot of them actually um again going back to the cookie level with the battle arena like i've just i just love hearing like that the hokey whimsical music from from previous mm-hmm. games and uh so i i i think she's only one half of the if memory serves right she's only one half of the composers that worked on on the wii one but there's almost always two people who work on it. I yeah, just can't yeah, remember the other guy's was, uh, uh, Ryo Nagamatsu. There we go. And I cannot remember what else he has worked on. Yeah. <laughs> her name I know because of Animal Crossing and because of Dragons of the Week. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Dragons of the Week. Oh, my God. Yep. For, shout out to Dragons of the Week, man. So, listeners, back when Taste of Dragons wasn't on hiatus, every week they would do, a, or most weeks, I should say, you you switch up the format a few times. But for a while, every week you were doing Dragons of the a Dragon of the Week, which was just to highlight one individual in the gaming sphere, whether it's like an influencer like a streamer or like a content creator or a developer or uh, someone who is, has hand, like a maybe even a, like an exact like Reggie fils or something like that. Yeah. Um, someone who had a hand in gaming culture. And I always love that. I actually found out I, I reached out to this to this person and they, they did respond to me. But uh, she said that she couldn't write just yet. Uh, Elizabeth LaPense, who was, I think Troy did a Dragon of the Week on her. She's a game developer who focuses on games from like an indigenous person's perspective. And so she she made a whole bunch of games talking about like the treatment of indigenous people and this and that, like there's one game. It's basically like reverse Oregon trail. I think, you know what? I have it on my phone. Give me two seconds. I know this is a tangent. Uh, When rivers were trails and it's, it's like the, Oh my goodness. Yeah. It's the Oregon trail from the perspective of the indigenous people who are forced out of their land. And I have not personally played it, but it's on my phone and she does other stuff like that. And she's currently working on another game. So when I heard Troy talk about her, I'm like, yo, I wonder if I can get her on the show. And I almost did. I almost did. Oh, uh, she got back so to cool. me and just said, I'm too busy right now. Call, you know, follow up with me in a, in a couple of years and we'll see. And so yeah, actually yeah. that was like two years ago. So maybe I will follow up with her. Hey, and we'll see. Now's the time. I can get know? her on the show. You know, that would be, that'd be really cool. <laughs> Um, anyway, yeah, I, so yes, uh, Dragons yeah. of the Week. It's an all, it was an, I love that segment from your show. Yeah, it was a it was a very uh, 
smaller version of what you do every single week. It was just a nice, you know, five minute or five, 10 minute was, long yeah. segments where we would just focus on one person or one thing or whatever. And, you know, and deep dive into it. Whereas, you know, you do deep dives every single week and they're hour long. So like, it's a very much short, you know, smaller version. Of what you we were do. aspiring to be more like still loaded. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about, I mean, you guys would, what I loved about, the dragons of the week is it always covered stuff that i never would have thought of it was such a unique perspective and it was a little bit different than mine because i don't i don't necessarily cover like you covered um uh who is it uh she's a she's a streamer oh my god i can't remember her name oh, it, it was a really um, popular streamer Valky it wasn't ray. like pokemon valkyrie ray there you go yeah, yeah. uh it covered valkyrie ray it's someone i never would have thought to even like one i never heard of her because i don't follow anything in that sphere of gaming mm-hmm. or very few but it was still, it was cool to me because I and I learned more about someone who is a big voice in the gaming community and stuff like that. So it's an awesome segment. I always love that. Um, thank you. Thank anyway, you. <laughs> so I guess we should uh, wrap up the episode here. We uh, any final thoughts on the music or the visuals before I go into the listener section, no, listener no. write-in section? I think we covered everything. I think we we have we've done we've done good. We did good today. Yeah, we've is- done good. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we've done good things we've only only made people happy and no one has lost anything so we're good <laughs> ah, they'll be fine no we didn't blue shell anyone we're good to go right we we're, good. Go. we're good we didn't don't we didn't give them any blue shells <laughs> right no blue shells here no. blue shells no bullet bills yes <laughs> I was trying to find, I don't know if it's a parrot. I hope someone read a blue balls joke into that with the whole blue shell thing, but I don't Gosh, know. I so. Man, I, I really hope I, I was listening to like, it's kind of there. Maybe I killed the joke now by explaining it, but Hey, that's, that's what I do, baby. Kill jokes. <laughs> <laughs> One shell at a time. Uh, ah. All right. First up from the critical arcade podcast. Uh, they wrote in from Instagram. I used to play for hours with my little brother and cousin incredibly special memories that's all that's what you know mario kart's all about man is making exactly. memories with friends and family i actually when we when before we close out the episode i have a quote from miyamoto that, that kind of goes into a little bit of that but we'll get that at the very end so nice yeah i, I always like that and that kind of ties in with what both of you were talking about where uh you would meet up with a group of friends from your video game a- a troupe your acting troupe that what a wild concept yeah. I mean that as a compliment, by the way. What, what a, a completely wild normal wild concept. <laughs> it is normal. <laughs> it was for us. It was pretty normal. Besides, fuck being normal. If that's if that's right. not normal, fuck being normal. Right. Exactly. Rather, being normal is boring. Nobody wants it is. normal. <laughs> <laughs> and once you realize that literally nobody is normal and we're just hiding, most people just hide their weird, it makes it a lot easier to bust out of your shell. Exactly. Oh, it bust, does. bust out of your blue shell, green shell, or red shell. One of Do those. You know, there we go. <laughs> Have really a mushroom, you'll be happier. Shells. <laughs> <laughs> but it is true, though, and it's good advice. There's every everyone out there, you know, just be yourself as much as you want to be. It'll, yeah. you, you'll find your tribe. Exactly. All right, over from the Discord now, uh, my buddy Magiac Man. Uh, Mario Kart Wii is easily my favorite Mario Kart, but also the biggest pain in the ass because I could never beat my sister in it. And to this day, she brings it up whenever I beat her in any game. <laughs> I <laughs> so mean, amazing. that's pretty cool. Uh, you know, big props to your sister for remembering that. That's pretty funny, actually. <laughs> <laughs> also, oh, is it the only one of the games she's won? Is that it? Don't take that from her. Let her have it. <laughs> no, you need to rip it away. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. You know what? No pity wins. I'm not saying give anybody a pity win. I'm just saying. Remember, Joe, we are also talking to the sore loser here. So like well, look, yeah. I'm a sore loser. I'm understanding what he's going through. I'm, sure trying, you are to, also I'm trying to sore say, loser. like, I don't I don't sore losers anonymous right here. Right? It's us. Well, I guess we're not that anonymous. <laughs> oh crap. Um, <laughs> Majiak also writes that Coconut Mall is his favorite map. It will always be the best Mario Kart map. So there's another vote for Coconut Mall. Nice. It's a good map. It's a really good map. <laughs> Our final write-in from Mast Keaton, a friend of the show and patron. So thank you, Keaton, for being a patron. So Keaton writes, uh, I was trying to unlock all the time trial expert ghosts by beating the ghosts by five seconds. I was keeping a mental list in my head of the ones I had beaten and was down to one track left. It was the ice level. 
I don't remember its name, oh. but it was insanely difficult. Finally, after a week of practice and using every trick I could think of, I did it. I beat the ghost by five seconds and nothing unlocked. I pushed myself even further and shaved off another half second and nothing. Finally, I turned to the internet to find out the time I needed to beat and realized my mental checklist was wrong. I had already unlocked the expert ghost and had been racing it for the past week and gotten faster than the expert ghost by over five seconds. It was one of the most impressive achievements of my Mario Kart career, and I didn't even realize it. The last ghost was the mall. There we go. The last ghost was the mall, I think. And hey. I, it's unlocked pretty Thank easily. Thank you. <laughs> oh, there wow. We go. I can't imagine getting being that much faster. My goodness. They were hard. What I a great even... story, too. Like, what? Yeah, are... <laughs> that's awesome. Five sec, like five seconds, is nothing to sneeze at, man. In a racing game, that's a lot of time. That is a lot of time. That's a lot of time in a in a uh, not very long, you know, race. You know, like not very long races. Like, there, it's not like you know these races are four hours long and you shave five seconds off. These races are you know like three minutes, four minutes long, and five seconds is a long time. <laughs> That's a good chunk of time, man. They did good. That's awesome. Better than I'll ever be. I'm awful at Same. racing games. I am. I am yeah. so impressed. No, I'm not gonna lie. I enjoyed watching you guys play Forza Horizon or whatever that um, oh, whatever I that, that uh, yes, uh, that open world Forza game. Oh, is. it's Forza. You're you're, yeah, you're Forza Horizon. the reason we bought an yeah. Xbox. That's what I like to call it. It is actually. <laughs> we did buy an Xbox specifically so that Joe could play that game. I literally, <laughs> I I buy consoles for a game. I won't buy the console until there's a game I want to play on it. But that that one, as soon as I love the Forza, the open world Forzas, I love them. I don't know what it is about those games. They're just really fun to drive around and do nothing and not care about breaking things. It's great. <laughs> and that one's I, I, gorgeous. <laughs> I wanted to play that literally just from watching. Anyway, we should wrap up this episode, though. <laughs> it's worth we, it. We're going. So... That will do it for this episode of Still Loading. Thank you all so much for joining me. Uh, Brian, Joe, where can the good people find you online? And is there anything you'd like to promote? Uh, sure. Yeah, uh, we are still streaming. We stream uh, twice a week now. So uh, you can still find us at Taste of Dragons on Twitch. Uh, we stream on Saturday nights where it's actually Joe and I playing a co-op games. We call it the co-op couple. Uh, so currently we're playing through Vampire Survivors and we start at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Saturdays. And then on Tuesdays, uh, we talk about pop culture and uh, and all sorts of fun you know, movie trailers, uh, acting news, all that type of stuff. Um, we're live Tuesdays at 10 p.m. ish Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we do that with a couple of our friends that are all over the country. So uh, that's a lot of fun. Um, and then anything that you want to promote, Joe? No, you got it. You got that's it. That's where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And uh, as usual for myself, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Threads, Blue Sky, at Still Loading Pod, at Still Loading Podcast over on YouTube. If you want to support the show, please consider giving it a five star rating or review on Apple Podcasts or whichever podcasting app you use. You know, that helps more people find the show and it makes me feel warm and fuzzy. I like feeling warm and fuzzy. You can also support the show by going to patreon.com slash still loading pod for a dollar a month. You'll get all the episodes a little bit earlier with better audio quality, as well as access to patron voting rights, which help guide the direction of the show. I do quarterly polls to help pick future topics as well as started it this year. Um, I don't know how long I'm going to continue to shout it out, but I might as well shout it out again here. Um, in the beginning of each year, I, I started it this year. I want to continue it next year as well. I'm going to do a backlog month poll where in September or October, I basically have all my patrons vote for – I put 16 games up on a poll. And the top four that got voted on will be the games that I cover in like September or October later that year. So this year, oh, cool. the winners of the poll were Donkey Kong Country. I had never beaten Donkey Kong Country, so I played – need to finish that uh donkey kong country the order 1886 Dur final fantasy 7 dirge of cerberus and 
uh, what's the last toe jam mineral. There we go. Toe jam mineral. Oh. So those four games, one, it's a very eclectic blend of games, but that's backlog month, baby. You never know what you're going to get. So that's all for a dollar a month. You get all those, all those things, voting rights, early access, all that good stuff for a dollar a month for $3 a month. You'll get your name read at the beginning of the episode. Like you heard on this one, as well as everything at the $1 tier for $4 a month, you'll get everything on the previous two tiers plus to access to two mini bonus episodes every month and at this point there's well over like 50 of them maybe even closing in on 60 pretty soon um so there's lots of bonus episodes for you to check out and then for five dollars a month you'll get everything i mentioned prior plus access to still bonding which is my monthly james bond podcast where me and a bunch of friends bond over 007 the time this episode comes out the world is not enough should be the one that just came out you know the the second to last pierce brosnan bond film so lots of content over you for for all you wonderful people over on patreon patreon.com slash still loading pod and that is all the time i have for you on this episode of still loading thank you all once again for listening and before we wrap this up i just want to thank all of my guests for the entirety of mario mania this has been a wonderful celebration for episode 300 and there's going to be another big event later this year it is the 10th anniversary of the show uh, i want to say in july is something like that so 10 years of still loading is, is going to be in just a few months still not entirely sure what i'm doing for that but i got months to plan it but be on the lookout i'm going to be doing something for that as well maybe not a full mario mania thing i don't know if i got i can handle two big events like that in the same year but uh episode 300 it was a like this whole mario mania thing for episode 300 has been awesome thank you to all of my guests who have joined me for this mario kart series for your mario month for dexter for starting up a new uh rewatch series with me with the super mario super show and of course all of my wonderful guests over on episode 300 the super mario fantasy draft so that is all uh thank you for all hanging out with me throughout mario mania and mario month i'll see you all next week for a new episode so Brian, Joe, thank you once again for joining me. Thank you so much for for having having us. us. Yeah, it was great. A lot of fun. It was great having you back on. And before this episode ends, y'all, this is future Josh jumping in because I forgot to do this. I teased it on an earlier episode this month and I forgot to do it. So I'm putting it in right now. My ranking of these Mario Kart games that I covered throughout this month. So let's dive into it real quick. At number five is Mario Kart 64. Number four, Mario Kart Super Circuit. Number three, this episode, believe it or not, Mario Kart Wii. Number two, Mario Kart Double Dash and bringing it into the top slot, Mario Kart DS. Man, that single player thing really put it over the edge for me. I really enjoyed that game. So yeah, that's my final ranking. And with all that said, listeners, I will see you all next time.